Goodbye, other world. Is that you behind my back, Mitzi? Miss Ashworth, I thought... I thought you were dead. I saw that man hit you right in the head. Me? Dead? No. No, I'm a tough old girl. You can't kill me that easily. Stop asking stupid questions. We have no time for that. Let's calm down, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. What's this? Duct tape? Yeah, he had loads of that stuff. Maybe we can break this tape if we pull really hard? It won't hurt to try. It's pointless. We're completely wrapped in this damn tape. We're cocoons. Stuck in a web. Waiting to be eaten. But where's the spider? He's gonna play with us first, isn't he? Pull yourself together and stop talking shit. I can't think properly. How about those lockpicks that you always carry with you? You know, the ones you got from your dad and used to break into this place? But we aren't locked in a room, are we? We're wrapped in duct tape in case you forgot. How is the lockpick going to help here? I don't know. It's probably sharp. You could use it to cut this tape. Well, even if that was the case, I can't reach it anyway. So let's forget the lockpicks and think of something else, all right? Did he hurt you? That bastard packs a hell of a punch. I've got a bit of a headache, but I think I'm all right. What about you, Mrs. A? Me? Fresh as a daisy. But I'll feel better after we've dealt with this unpleasant guest of ours. Do you think he's going to... rape us? No, he is not. Don't worry, I'll figure something out. Let's just wait for him to come back. Sooner or later, they always make a mistake. Miss A, I'm sorry I had upset you. I shouldn't have pushed you so hard. And I'm sorry about the mug, too. It's all right. Water under the bridge. Let's use this sharp knife to cut the tape, then, shall we? What? You've got a knife? Yeah, but I'm sorry. I just remembered I can't reach it. So let's forget the knife and think of something else, yeah? Oh, you are a nasty piece of work, Miss A. I really believed you had a knife. You shouldn't joke about it, you know. It's cruel. It wasn't a joke. I lied to you. And you lied about the lockpicks, didn't you? You don't really have them. Who are you to call me a liar? I can't reach the damn lockpicks. It's the truth. Really? Yes, but clearly my word isn't enough. You know what? I'll show you when this is over. If we're not chopped into little pieces, packed in plastic shopping bags and dumped in the trash, that is. Maybe it won't come to that. He might just throw our bodies in the river or bury them in the woods. Maybe there won't be any 
shopping. Always an optimist. So, any ideas? Not that many, really. None at all, actually. I'm sorry. And you? What do you think we should do? We should kill the fucker. With what? We're tied up. Are you going to headbutt him to death? I will, if there's no other way. Come on, there's got to be something more sensible we can do. I'm not gonna die here. Not like this. Maybe together we can pull this pipe off the wall? How is that exactly going to help us? Stop asking stupid questions and pull with me. Great, that's just what we needed. A cold shower. I used to like flowers, you know. Like everyone else. Or even more. There was this guy. I should have told him from the start I wasn't interested. But I didn't. Maybe I was interested. In a way, probably. Flattered would be a better word. It was ten years ago. I can hardly even remember him now. He did that thing every week. Because he knew Eric was at work and I was in the flat alone. So every Friday night I'd get flowers delivered by a courier. Who's Eric? Your partner? My husband. He was a taxi driver. Worked every weekend. And I was still on maternity leave. Zoe... Our little daughter was only six months old at the time. Well, five months and 28 days exactly. She would be 11 now. Anyway, that one Friday evening's courier had delivered a big bouquet of the most beautiful lilies. Usually, I would have thrown them away, but I really liked them somehow. They were extraordinary. Absolutely stunning, and looked very expensive. I stood there looking at them, mesmerised. I didn't even hear the phone ring at first, but then I heard it loud and clear, as if I'd woken up from a strange dream, and I knew it was him calling. Wasting your time and money. You're right. Maybe I am. But you answered the phone, didn't you? You always do. Every Friday. You could have just let it ring. But you picked up because you wanted to talk to me. I know that. I'm not giving up so easily, Susan. You're a stalker. I should call the police. I'm just. I'm very. Oh, shut up. Just shut up, all right? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, Susan. I got carried away. But please, just think about it. I have time. I'll wait. 
Listen, I have to go. It's getting late. Wait. Yeah? Sorry, but this is over. Goodbye and good luck. I guess I should do something about these flowers. I'd really like to keep them. But I don't want Eric to know I have a secret admirer. Now I can tell Eric that Mandy had brought them for Zoe. It seems like a pretty innocent lie. I doubt he'll notice anyway. I hope you're dreaming about something nice, my little star. Eric must have come home early. But why? You're back early. Is something wrong? Yeah. Well, let's think about it for a minute. Is something wrong? Yes, Susan, there is. Didn't you watch television? Listen to the radio? Didn't talk to anyone today? What? what happened? Eric, just tell me what's wrong, okay? It was those bloody terrorists again. Here on our doorstep. Would you believe that? So, it was a bomb? Yes, in a restaurant. There's chaos spreading all through the city. Everyone's panicking. The police and army are everywhere. But you don't even care, do you, Susan? Of course I care. I had no idea. You should pay more attention to what's happening to this country, Susan. I could have died, and you wouldn't even know. Did you get hurt? No, not really. But the cab smashed quite badly. I was just there when it happened. There was smoke. Clouds of dust so thick you couldn't see a fucking thing. So I stop. And all of a sudden, some van hits me from the back. I hear my passenger screaming and shouting, and there's blood on the rear window. And just then, another car drives right into us, and we're all stuck in that mess. Nobody knows what's going on, but imagining this might just be the end of the world. But no, it was some geezer with a bloody bomb. They closed all the main streets, in case there's more of them. What time was that? Around 7 p.m. I spent another two hours trying to get someone to tow the damn cab to the garage. Would you believe? Our insurance doesn't even cover this sort of thing. You should have called me. I did. Four times. You didn't answer. I must have been... Yeah, yeah. You were busy with the baby. Every time it's the same old story. 
We've still got that wine in the fridge, haven't we? Get some glasses, Susan. I need a drink. All right. I'll get the glasses. You get the wine. But are you sure you don't want to take a shower first? No. I just need a drink. I can wash later. Are you gonna get that? If it's Jerry, tell him I'm not here. I don't want to talk to them tonight. Hello? It's me again. I'm sorry, but I had to hear your voice again. I love you, Susan. Susan? You still there? Please, say something. Anything. Thanks, but we're already insured with someone else. I... excuse me? Susan, it's me. The only thing I'm trying to sell to you is my heart. We won't be needing pet insurance either. Would you like my husband to talk to you? He's just come home from work. He usually deals with insurance companies. Will you just put the phone down? Once you start talking to them, these insurance bloodsuckers will never leave you alone. Susan, I'm so sorry. Should I hang up? Just hang up, Susan. Take care, then. Then the arguing started. It slowly grew into something bigger, something horrible. Stupid remarks and old grudges mixed with alcohol turned into some sick exchange of pointless accusations. It wasn't the first time we argued, but it was the last. Just look at the state of this place. It's a mess. Listen, I know you're with Zoe all day, but it's not like she's still a little baby. She's six months already. You'll have to organize your day a bit better and get things done. If other women find time, why can't you? Don't be nasty. I'm doing all I can. Are you really? Okay, doing all you can. You obviously care about your husband. Coming home after a hard day's work, he's gonna be hungry. But wait, where's his dinner? Oh, uh, let me guess. You didn't make it because you were too busy changing nappies and singing and playing and washing. Yeah, I think so. And I'm not going to feel guilty about it. If you'd spent more time with our daughter yourself, you'd know how important these things are. So pardon me, there's no dinner for a hard-working husband. From now on, he's gonna have to cook for himself. Because, you know what? The wife is working just as hard, and she's really tired of being treated this way. She better get used to it, cause this is just the start. There's gonna be some changes around here. I'm fed up of being pushed around by you. I put the bread on our table, don't I? I'm the man in this family! I will make the rules, and I get the respect I deserve. Eric, you're drunk. Get off my case, all right? Look, I understand you've had a very bad day, but it's not my fault that the bomb had gone off and your car was damaged. I'd really like you to calm down now. I'm sure we can sort everything out. We always do. Well, that's what you think. Yeah? And what do you think, Eric? What do I think? So it matters all of a sudden what I think. Well, I'll tell you. Sure. I think you're lazy, Susan. You do nothing all day while I keep working my ass off to provide for this family. 
I think you're trying to shift the responsibility on me, like you always did. I think you use the baby as an excuse for everything. And I think you're an asshole. How dare you accuse me of such things? It only takes one look at the flat to see it's all true. I'm done talking to you. Of course you are. That's what you always do, isn't it? You run out of arguments, you stop talking to me, then you lock yourself in the bathroom and fucking cry. I'm sick of repeating the same old thing over and over again. Then why won't you give me a break, for God's sake? You're acting like I've done something terrible. I don't even know what your problem is. Is there something you're not telling me, Eric? You'd know if you listened to me. But you never listen to me, do you? Not to a single word I've ever said! Right. Here we go. It's not you. It's the alcohol speaking. I shouldn't be taking any of this seriously. I know that tomorrow you'll be apologising to me for it. It was just a couple of glasses and you had some too! I'm not drunk! I wish I was. Maybe then I could laugh at this shitty life and not care so much. That's a good one. You really care so much, Eric. You should get a medal or something. I thought you said you weren't going to talk to me no more. You are full of shit, Susan! Full of shit! How can you talk to me like this? You're treating me like dirt! Didn't you forget something? I'm your wife! I'm the mother of your child! Doesn't that mean anything to you at all? A wife and a mother? Why don't you start acting like one? When was the last time you showed me that you care about me? All you ever talk about is the baby. I love her to bits, I swear I do. But I want to have a wife too. When was the last time you even kissed me? I'm not even talking about sex. Oh, I knew it. Is that what bothers you so much? Is it? Of course it fucking bothers me. Does it not bother you that we never have time for each other? Look, we are new parents. It's always hard. All couples go through it, I heard. Well, fuck this. I heard different. Let me go. I have to check on Zoe. I left a window open in her room. She might be cold. That's right, just walk away. That's all you do, Susan. You can never finish anything. If there's one thing I don't want to finish, it's this stupid conversation. Why not? Are you afraid that I actually might be right? Are you scared of facing the truth? I'm sure Zoe's fine. It's the hottest summer we've had in years. It'll be good for her to have some fresh air in there. Won't you agree? I... I guess. Fine. Never mind. I haven't done anything wrong! Of course not! Because you're fucking perfect, aren't you? That's not what I said. Well, if you're so perfect, yeah? Then why are we here now, fighting? This is all messed up. You're behaving like a five-year-old. What the hell is wrong with you? You, Susan. You always knew which strings to pull. To tip me over the fucking edge. Stop it. Stop it, Susan. I've only just started. We should finally say to each other what we really think, right? We didn't even notice that outside the storm had started. I was so absorbed in that stupid fight that I forgot all about the open window. Anyway, and the flowers. Those fucking flowers. Right there, by her bed. She had some rare allergy to pollen, but we couldn't have known that. How were we supposed to know? It's rare. 
she started coughing and choking. The next time we saw her, when we found her, she, she was. After two days of what seemed like a narcotic dream, Eric had gone out and never came back again. They found him nearly a week later. He drank himself dead in the woods. I nearly didn't recognise him when I saw him in the morgue. It really was a hot summer. He looked... bad. Miss Ashworth, I... Thank you for telling me that. Now I understand. I understand why you're so sad all the time. What do you want from us? Are you deaf? Mitzi, let me handle this. Let us go right now, you moron. Mitzi! Leave her alone. Don't you dare. No! Take me, instead. Take me. What? What's going on? You're letting me go? Just like that? Where's my friend? What have you done to her? What do you want me to do?
stand still, Miss. I'm gonna be right back with a knife, and I'll cut you down, all right? really going to do it, aren't we? Yes, Mitzi. You will finally get your closure. Maybe I will get mine too. Did you take that map with you? Yes. We can always refer to it if we get lost. I've lived in this building for many years. I won't get lost, Mitzi. But it'd be a good idea to cross people off. Once we're sure it's not them, it might give us a clearer picture of how far we've got. Okay. Good luck, Mrs. A. Mitzi. Are you sure you're feeling up to it? This recent incident, it must have been pretty tough for you. No, I'm good. Never felt better, Mrs. A. 